Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house. Welcome to Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house. Yeah. Big Mama's house. Welcome to Big Mama's house. Big Mama's house. Welcome back to Big Mama's House, y'all. It is I, Mama, and I am here today to talk to you about Welcome to Plathville, Season 5, Episode 12. Um, as you will obviously see, Papa is not with me today for this. His work schedule is insane, and so this week you're stuck with me by myself. Um, before we get into it, we want to thank every single one of you who have subscribed because it's free. Um, and we got our hundred subscribers before Thanksgiving. So please go to our YouTube page, click on the community tab. The first thing you see should be a post from us saying, you know, thank you. Comment below to be entered into being part of our podcast for an episode. If you want to be entered in for that to, you know, be part of our podcast and help us with the podcast for an episode, you know, Hey, enter it, you know, we want to hopefully all of you would like want to see you know how it works hopefully but thank you all anyway every single one of you thank you um and thank you for all the comments i love them keep them coming i love to hear from you guys and happy thanksgiving in america and abroad i hope you all have a wonderful happy day with love and caring and you know good things and good food and all that so okay this episode, we start out when, with Kim dropping the little girls off after her visit, and she's dropping them off at the house, and we see that the littlest girls' rooms is a mess, of course, because that's just little girls. I know mine were notoriously messy little girls, um, and Rallo still is, but we're not just going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> um, and even Amber was like, your guys' room is a mess, and yeah, sisters. And we found out that Amber has been asking for a cell phone. Um, a Barry agreed to talk about it. Uh, so they're gonna like, Kim's like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to deal with him with that. Um, but that Kim joked and said that if she gets her phone, her first text should be a picture to her of the, her sister's clean room, you know, as, as a surprise. Just you know, a joke. The hey guys, clean up your room kind of thing. And I think it's nice that she is still instilling those things in, even in, in their quote-unquote dad's house because she could just be like, oh, I don't care if your room's a mess here, you know, whatever. Um, but she was still like, hey, guys, like, you know, she can't really be the authority there, but she's gently mom way being like, hey, clean up your room, guys. And I think that's cool of her. Um, I don't usually have a lot of super positive things to say about Kim, um, but yeah, on that one, good on her uh so kim says that the divorce is making barry step up and be more a more involved parent um and that was part of the reason she left is because he wasn't and so i i always get super frustrated when women nag and plead and beg and argue and fight a man for a relationship for him to like grow up and like again be more active with the kids help out a little more on the house whatever the situation is and as soon as like a woman is like no i'm done i'm sick of your shit you're never gonna change and this isn't what i want um they automatically change and that my ex did that and it pissed me off so bad but don't worry he backslid right into who he really is so it didn't last for long but still, it's like, why does someone else get the benefit of what I fought for for so many years? Yeah, it's it's annoying. I see that. Um, but at least he is stepping up, and that that's good for the kids in any way. And while she's there, Kim talks to all the little younger girls about their schoolwork, which she's still in charge of. So that's, you know, making sure he's like, they're still doing that because that is very, very important if they're going to homeschool. And in her interview, Kim said she does all the work for 10 kids for almost 25 years and nothing. All of a sudden, he steps up and does a little bit and he gets all the credit and all the praise. A hundred, a hundred percent. And there's going to, I'm doing a, an op-ed about some sister wives and Plathville things that have been going on that like, I don't know, maybe not worthy of the, the, the 
this is like a podcast of the uh, episode reviews, right? But sometimes my own opinions are go a little bit beyond that specific episode. So I do those in a little separate, shorter episode just to like get it all out. You know what I mean? Because sometimes these people frustrate me just a little bit. Um, okay. So then Kim continues. She said, um, because wow, here's a really great dad taking a little bit of interest in the children. Whereas a mom does that faithfully for 25 years and gets no recognition facts 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 y'all 100 percent, thousand percent true and you know that that uh that little truth has been shown more and more on uh, tiktoks and instagram and youtube and facebook i see that a lot about how you know even the men are going hey dudes if your wife isn't happy with you and she's always nagging you about something maybe it's because um you're just another child in the home, you know? Yeah, you're an adult outside of the home, but inside the home, you become another child to be taken care of. And yeah. And so when they start stepping up just a little bit, they're like, oh, what a good dad. Oh, oh, come on. Yeah, it is good being a good dad. But you know what? That should just be the expectation, not like a something to praise. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. What do you guys think about that one for sure? Um, and we kind of see in this whole thing, like Barry and Kim are very awkwardly ignoring each other. And, uh, but Kim said that Barry has been communicating with her in a way that frustrates her, uh, i.e. pisses her off. And she is so pissed off that she can't even freaking look at him. Girls and dudes, okay? Have you ever been so pissed off at an ex, especially? That you couldn't even look at them, even though you had to talk to them about something important. Like, I, yes, yes. I never, I, I would get, like, physically nauseous seeing my ex face um, after we were, like, 100% split up, done trying, 100%. Th th sure, I wanted a divorce. And just looking at him and being in his proximity, like, would make me nauseous. And so... I get being that upset with someone. I really do. And so she goes outside and calls him uh, so that, you know, talk about Amber's phone situation. And Barry plays dumb about why she's so, so upset. And she's said that she's got stuff going on in the background. And he's got this smug, he's like a played out stoner look, robotic, like uh, is it that. If you guys saw that episode and you saw that, what I'm talking about right there when he was talking about, he doesn't know why she, she's upset and her, her, if you saw that face, am I crazy? Like, cause I don't have Papa here to bounce it off of. Okay. So I need you guys to help me out a little bit this episode. Um, and then they discuss Amber getting a phone and like how to monitor it and for security things. Um, and they, like Kim points out that the older kids didn't get a cell phone until they were 16 and were able to drive and have a job. Amber is 14. And so it's a little bit different. And obviously the younger kids are getting the benefit of the older kids like experiences. So I, I don't know. I think 14 is a dangerous age. Um, you have to be very careful about monitoring what's going on with your kids at that age. Um, and they said that they're going to talk to Amber about, um, the, the dangers of social media, uh, before she gets one. So that at some point before she gets it, they're going to, they'll sit down together and talk to her and make sure she understands that, you know, especially with them being kind of like a famous family, you know, you don't want people taking advantage of her or, you know, you know what I mean? And there's a lot of creeps that have seen her on TV and, and, Maybe see she's pretty, if you know what I mean. Like it's you have to be careful with your young, younger children, teenage years that they're creeps out there. Just my opinion, y'all. Um, so then we go over to Ethan and Micah, and they're at a bar um, for a beer and a chat, and they're talking about how nice it was to see the little girls when they visited. That was last episode, um, and Ethan even says he should do it more often, but. Ethan never impresses on me any great real intent or urgency. 
um, when he says these things, he's like, yeah, I should, I should see them more. But with Ethan, it's kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing with him. You know, that's why, like, whenever he's working on his cars and stuff, he gets so, like, obsessed, okay? That, like, he doesn't even think about his own wife. You know what I mean? Same thing, like, whenever he's with Micah, he tries to not talk to her much because he knows that there's just going to be drama, for one, and he's just trying to ha enjoy this experience with his brother and they all he did he just seems to do that you know out of sight out of mind with him um but then the brothers agree to disagree about a lot of their situations that they you know especially around olivia um and i don't think women can do that as well agree to disagree especially if words have been said i think a lot of women um are like squirrels or chipmunks and they swirl that little angry nut away for another time. And the next time they get pissed off at that person, they start chewing on that nut, you know? If that makes it, that's kind of a weird analogy. But that's what I think around my experiences with women friends and women in the workplace. And even some fa female family members, I'm just saying. Um, and Ethan said that he wished more people would make an effort to get along. Y'all! Tell me, tell, Mariah just reached out to him after Christmas with an apology and you broke her damn heart by being a stubborn idiot. So don't tell me that you wish more people would make an effort to get along because you are the only one who's making a big stink with, with the other siblings. Think about it. Okay. Just saying, but just, oh my God, Ethan. Oh. And then My Micah has to bunk with their aunt and uncle because Olivia won't let him stay with them um, without a conversation, capital letters, right? And he's like, I'm only going to be here for like a half a day. That is not how I want to spend it. You know, I drove all this way to hang out with my brother and maybe to see her. That would be fine, but it's not really something I want to do. But I want to be with my brother as long as possible. And I don't think that is unreasonable. He's not saying he'll never have a conversation, just that he doesn't want to have one in this particular situation. I don't think, um, I don't think that's uncalled. I don't think it's out, out of bounds. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and Mike is straight up says he thinks she's slightly selfish. I think Mike is being kind here, but that's just my opinion. And she focuses on her feelings and how she thinks more than anyone else. I personally am not going to be friends with that. Good for you, Micah. Because you know what? If that's not something that you're okay with, that's fine. You don't have to... Not every personality is going to mesh. And it's okay to say in a respectful way, Hey, I, I just can't do this anymore. And so to spare everyone else's feelings, I'm just going to like withdraw. You know what I mean? Not that I hate you. Not that I never, ever want to see your face again. It's just, I'm not going to seek you out. And we're just going to agree to pretend like the other one doesn't exist. Or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, and Micah encourages Ethan to keep speaking his mind. However, in my opinion, he needs to do it maybe in a more assertive and less aggressive way. Like I said, I think it was the last episode that he seems to take all of his frustration and anger is out on mariah right now and like even when she's tried to reach out and make amends and even said she was sorry um he just still like he he thinks of her as a little sister and like he has he does no wrong but it, that's not true and uh, and micah said that uh he and Mar mariah looked up to ethan and olivia as the best example but that wasn't a good example for us. I don't think this is a healthy relationship. I would hate for my marriage to look like this. Wow. I mean, that's kind of deep coming. I mean, again, I've, I've said before, if you've looked at my insights into this, but these people, there's a lot more to Micah than me see I. He may not have the highest IQ, but as far as being kind and self-aware and you know, honest, but kind. Um, Micah is winning, winning the whole thing. 
in my opinion. And Ethan says, that's tough to hear. Um, wow, that, 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 that's a great comeback there, Ethan. Um, Ethan, Ethan advises everyone, make sure that you're both extremely clear on where your life is going, your values. That's me and Olivia right now. And so obviously we know that. And Ethan says he's got to talk to Olivia about their marriage. And Micah helps or hopes to see him in L.A. in a few days. Well, we all know that right now things are not great with Olivia. Ever. They're never great with Olivia. Um, so will she let him go to L.A.? Hmm. Um, so Ethan says, quote, I don't intend to continue to put my relationships with my family on hold to try to save my marriage. That's not sustainable. Yes. And you know what? He's finally communicating in a very clear, direct way. And I can tell they he's using a lot of therapy language. They both do. Like they talk to each other and, and nothing but lang uh, therapy talk. And I think that kind of keeps people from being 100% honest because you're trying to say it in a way that maybe is nicer than you intend. You know what I mean? Um, and Olivia says to Ethan, I got blown off um, by Micah and by you. You didn't, in quote, encourage him to meet with me to make, okay, in my opinion, to make her relevant before the season is over, right? So she's mad that Ethan didn't be like, Micah, man, you really need to meet with her. This is important to me. Like, I'm not going to see you anymore if you don't go meet with Olivia right this minute. That's what she expected him to do. And she's pissed that he didn't. And you know why? Because she is trying desperately to have some sort of relevant beep, like, point to being on this season right because so far there hasn't been much um instead of twisting his arm like almost literally to force him to face me instead of going no contact effective immediately as they were driving up an interstate you continued to chill and chat with your little adult brother how dare you oh my god you know what i mean it's like she expects so much she wants this immediate hostile reaction or else you don't support her. And that's not healthy at all. Um, but because Micah isn't stupid enough to, quote, fight it out with Olivia alone, um, that means he's scared of you. She was like, oh, he's, he's, he's just scared of me. And I'm like, why? Why would he be scared of you, dude? Like, Bitch, you better leave my precious alone. Um, Micah is a good person, and he doesn't deserve the gaslighting narcissist sick that you try to pile on him. And we're not going to have it, because Micah's a good egg, and he doesn't deserve it. And no one's scared of you, I promise. No one. No one. No one. Right, right everybody, you tell me. Are we scared of Olivia? I don't, I don't think we are, nor is Micah. Um, and Ethan had, y'all, Ethan said he didn't know that his siblings disliked her so much. Are you fucking serious? Like, Ethan Plath, I know you are not mentally deficient. I know that you're an intelligent human being. You knew. You were just in denial and didn't want to think about it. And now they're like, no, dude, we hate her. And yeah, like how, how, oh, how I can't even wrap my brain about how you, how you would not know. I just, I don't know, guys. Um, and he, he says that they're going to dig deep now and they got married too young. They didn't know who they were or what they really wanted, you know, the, Blah, blah, same thing they've been talking since they got married. Um, it's just the only drama that she can dig up is with her and Ethan right now. So I guess that's what's making her relevant. I don't know. 
So then we're with Barry, Micah, and Isaac in Malibu. Um, their production budget is nice. Got them a nice place. I know they say that Micah took care of everything, but I mean, surely production pitched in for it, I would hope, because, you know, Mike is a, you know, an, a model and he works hard for his money in between all his modeling gigs and modeling isn't exactly easy all the time. So, you know, let, let, you know, anyway, um, it, it's beautiful. And he's, he, I think Michael just like showing off for his dudes, you know, he doesn't have a ton of friends in LA that are like available all the time and he gets lonely. And so being able to show off for his dad and his brothers, you know, like, it's especially Ethan, because Ethan is his hero. They all looked up to Ethan for for their whole lives. And, like, he wants to show off his lifestyle for a minute. Um, And I'm sorry, but Barry just should never use slang ever. When he says drip and dope, I just, oh, it's ugly cringe. Cringe, cringe, cringe. I can't, no, stop it, Barry. And then Micah said, uh, Olivia limited how much Ethan saw the family in the past. Now, we all kind of suspected that. But now does Micah know that for sure because Ethan said so? Or is this just his opinion? That's an interesting distinction that I would love to know. And then we're back in Gloomyville with Olivia. And she says that she looked for and liked that Ethan, quote, respected her when they dated because her dad didn't respect her. And, of course, now she's crying. And, of course, we all know that she's had daddy issues, and that's the shit that she needs to be working on in therapy. Uh, but, you know, here we are. And my, my question is to Olivia is, what is your definition, with examples, please, of respect? I don't, I don't know how much more he could respect you, dear. I, I want, that's why I think our definitions are different, which is why I asked the question, what is your definition with examples? Like, show me examples of what you consider to be respect so that we can be on the same page as far as our, you know, what our expectations are. So again, things that she should be working on with a real therapist. And in her interview, she, Olivia said, when dating, Ethan would do anything for me. One time, we had a fight, and so Ethan drove 17 hours just to talk to me for one hour to say, I'm so sorry, I'm not going to lose you over this, and I'm proving it by being here. And I'm like, if that is what you can say, like that blind, desperate obedience and need for love and acceptance is what you need and that's what you consider respect honey that makes you kind of sick you know and I'm not I don't mean that in like in a spiteful way I just mean literally you need some medical help because that that's not normal and that's not okay those kind of high expectations you will never ever be happy because no one's going to be able to meet that all the time you know that that's exhausting um, and she said that she feels there was no effort after they got married. Well, I mean, okay, I understand that a lot of times after the guy, you know, once you get the ring on her finger, you don't got to try any hard. You already got her, right? But, you know, you have to, it has to be a, a decision, a conscious choice to keep the romance alive, you know, to make special time for each other, especially when you have busy schedules. So, I mean, that's on both of you. You know what I mean? So I, I that's that can be fifty fifty for sure. Um, and Ethan said he's been very tolerant and accepting of lots of stuff. And quote, there are a few things though that I disagree with when it comes to our future and having kids. I have to draw the line somewhere. And I think we can all say that that's reasonable because we I think we all can see that Ethan has pushed his boundaries many times for Olivia's benefit. And I just, I mean, obviously she doesn't see it and it's never good enough and it's never far enough for her. Um, and we all know that they're just not right together and they just need, they'd be better off apart and be much happier apart. And I know that's, I've been there. I, I've been there, divorced at 23, like, you know, right about their age, you know, 
but luckily like they don't have any kids to have to worry about screwing up in the process so um and ethan said quote i feel like you have no boundaries you see that there's no limit to cross or no line to cross and olivia said i have some very strong boundaries you just don't like them and she said it in like a goofy way like you just don't like them or like something weird like that and i'm just like she she's not coming across very mature or reasonable at this point in time i just to me um and Ethan's interview said, he said, faith in politics is where they differ. And he wants his kids to be raised to be patriotic and to love their country. And she doesn't intend to instill love of country or of God in them. And he won't compromise on this or on those. So I'm seeing Ethan has made a list of three things in the entire world that he will not budge on regarding children. That's how important these things are to him. And in my opinion, he's never thrown down a line. Okay, his line. that He's like, this is my line in the stand. I'm not going to be on this. This is it. Anything else, but not these three things regarding our children. And you know what? She has thrown down so many lines for like whatever, like this is my line, these are my boundaries, I need this space, I need that space, and my boundaries and your boundaries. And she's got so many damn boundaries that nobody knows where's legal space. Okay. So it's like I just think that she's got a choice to make because he has always chosen to change to suit her, to make her happy, to make her happy with him, but she's never done that for him. Or if she has, if she has, if I am overlooking something, please let me know. That's all. Like, just tell me what were they? Because I just cannot remember. There, sorry, I cannot think of any. Um, and now Olivia plays the victim like he's sexist, and that just made me want to puke. And I'm not gonna give that any more time. And he says he didn't mean what he said. He had a, has apologized. But she keeps bringing it up to guilt him. And of course that doesn't work. Because I don't think Ethan really does guilt. I think he says what he does. And does what he means. And has no F's to give. If you're not happy about it honestly. A lot of the time. I don't understand that part of his personality. That he just does not care. If he hurts or offends other people. It's odd to me. Because I'm the opposite. I'm like oh my god I'm so sorry. Did I, did I unintentionally like like offend your neighbor's cricket that lives in its yard i'm so sorry that's me and as i'm sure we've gathered in you know between the lines here ethan is conservative olivia is progressive and olivia says quote i'm struggling to see the longevity of this relationship that it seemed very cold very practice rehearsed um i think she's been holding that nugget nugget on till the end of the season because she's already told the producers that she wants to leave and how does she get out and all this stuff. And so I think it's all very contrived. And I think Ethan is the only one that might have been actually surprised by it and sad by it. I think Olivia has been ready to go for a while and has just been stuck around for the storyline. That's my opinion. Uh, Olivia said she was born into a family that doesn't accept me na now. Because I'm different from them. And I have in-laws that don't accept me as I am now either. And so then as Olivia puts on her coat. And prepares to uh, to leave. Or to, you know he, she gets ready to hustle out. Before he can respond. Ethan whispers. Why does it have to be this way? And Olivia says. I said all I can say. Get a therapist. Um. I think you need a new one because you are a great a bitch and I can't stand you. And you have so many personality traits that are just offensive and grating. And I can't, I can't even with you, girl. And so Ethan says, damn therapists. And he looks really, really sad. Um, and I, I really felt for him because I know, I know he truly absolutely is in love with Olivia. There, and he like he said he's willing to move, budge and like change his, you know, his view on things about a lot of things. But when it comes to his children, 
that's one thing that he will not budge on. And whether I agree with his views or not, I have to respect a guy that cares enough about even his future children to make that a boundary with a woman who's had no boundaries with him, like, forever. So, that's, that's, it's a very scary thing to do, is to put that kind of choice out there, and wait for someone to either accept it or walk away. And we all know that Olivia's went, been waiting to walk, but I think poor Ethan is just ugh, blindsided by everything, because he's just not paying attention. And after she walks out and we get to go from Gloomville over to Sunny Acres, we're with all the dudes in Malibu. And Barry, for some reason, has these silver, shiny, 70s daily going out shoes, like the dress shoes. And uh, I'm not sure why, but it must have been a pretty quick turnaround because uh, Ethan arrives and kind of surprises everybody. And uh, in his interview, Mike has said that Ethan being here in Malibu means that he put his big boy pants on. He made his own decision. I'm not dumb. I know Olivia didn't want him to come here. Um, here's the thing though. He did not put his big boy pants on because his wife left him. And I, I guess that meant he was like, oh, well, she's gone. I guess I'll just go hang out with the dudes. Might as well, <laughs> you know? Um, so Ethan says he, he missed his first flight because Olivia came home and caught him packing, asked why, and he told her, uh, the, you know, about the trip to, with the dudes, and she said she should have known, and he couldn't decide if he was going to stay and maybe, you know, argue with her or talk to her or whatever, or go and, you know, have fun with his dudes. Um, and so he, and with his dithering, he missed his first flight, so he rescheduled it and got a, and a later one. And he says he's tired of dealing with all of her nonsense. And I don't blame him, but don't act like, you know, you, you're swinging your big dick around right now because, you know, you're, you stood up to her or whatever. You really didn't. You just, you know, figured she left anyway, so you might as well go have fun. It, it's not, no, dude, just no. Um, yeah, I, I know that they're building this up because it's almost the end of the season. They want to keep us talking and want us to come back, you know, next season to find out what happens. But, like, we all saw this coming and they're not as good as keeping things on the down low as they think they are. Um, but I would love to talk to any of these guys and about their story, you know what I mean? Because I find it all endlessly psychologically fascinating. And I hope that I help you guys, you know, maybe understand some of their different perspectives or why I think things are the way they are. I love to hear your guys' opinions. Um, thank you so much for hanging in there with me on this episode. I'm, I've been very nervous. I apologize if it wasn't very smooth. I am so used to doing this with Papa um, and discussing everything as we go and getting different insights and different points of view. And so I was very nervous um, doing this poem by myself because I found out at the very last minute that I was doing it alone without him. So I apologize if that wasn't very, uh, it wasn't as, as effortless as it may usually seem. So thank you for, you know, you know, giving me a break on this one. So you guys, it's almost Thanksgiving. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday with your families and have all the good things. Be safe. Please wear your seat belts. Please use your turn signals. Please spay and neuter your pets. And please, please, especially this time of year, there's lots of family and different personalities and nonsense going on. But be kind. Also, be kind to yourself. Things don't have to be perfect. It's going to be okay. Just try to relax and enjoy it, right? Okay, until next time, you guys. Bye.